Coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Don't let ever let anybody abuse you. But it's a license for use. And it says, this is your body. I'll never hold it against you in a wrong way. I'll never keep it from you. I'll never punish you by, by taking it away from you. And I'll never give it to somebody. In other words, I'll never go serve the kids all day long and then not give it to you sexually. For a husband to get the desires out of his wife that he really is looking for, if he'll you know, do those simple things of emotionally connecting through communication, you know, phone calls, you know, how are you doing, the please and thank yous, let me help you carry those groceries in, get the vacuum cleaner out. Okay, guys, let's go. We're going to talk about the secrets of lifelong passion and sexual intimacy. And I, lo- I really love teaching on this topic because there is so much misinformation in the world today. Now, this teaching, I do a lot of different seminars. I do a lot of different teaching on sex and sexual intimacy. And what I love about this teaching now is we're going to spell true. And when we spell true, we're going to establish some core beliefs that are essential now to building a foundation for passion and sexual intimacy. And the first, we're going to start with the T. And the T stands for the Bible is relevant and authoritative in my life and in our marriage. Okay, The Bible is is true and authoritative. Now, the the Bible's under attack, and I know this is under attack in America. It's under attack in many other countries as well. But understand this. When the devil came into the Garden of Eden, here's the first words he ever spoke to humanity. Has God surely said? Those were his first words. He can't defeat you till he disarms you. And God gave them a word, and if they would have followed that word, they would still be alive on the earth, and they would still be in a perfect marriage and perfect bodies. But he came to them and said, is that word that God gave you really true? And Eve said, oh yeah, it's true. And he says, no, it's not true. God knows that in the day that you eat that fruit, you're gonna be like him. You're gonna be a better person. God's trying to hold you down. He's trying to keep you from something right. There were thousands of trees in the garden that were legal. There was only one that was wrong. And he convinced them that the reason God wouldn't let them eat of that tree was because he was mean and he was trying to keep them down. And they walked over and took that fruit. And he said, you won't die in the day that you eat that fruit. You won't die. He said, God knows you're gonna, you're gonna come alive. You're gonna know the difference between good and evil. Listen to me, they died. They lost the garden. Everything God gave them was lost. Now, let me, let me say something. I'm a preacher. I'm all for sin if it works. I mean, I'm not a fuddy-duddy. I wasn't born a preacher. And I've, I've done all those things. I mean, I've done all those things. Okay. It kills people. Sin kills people. So the Bible, the Bible first of all, tells us how to enjoy sex, like the book of the Song of Solomon. I, I probably wouldn't read parts of the book of Solomon, Solomon in church, you know, The Bible talks graphically about sex because God created sex and he's a good God. He created it good. But listen to me. The Bible says certain things are wrong. The Bible says adultery is wrong. The Bible says that that sex outside of marriage is wrong. It says those things. If you'll stay within the... There are many ways you can enjoy sex. Be creative. Have fun having sex in marriage. That's what God wants for you. He's not a prude. He made it that way. He wants you to enjoy it. But he created a fence around it so that we could enjoy it and not have problems. And I'm telling you, as a marriage counselor and as a person myself, when I talk to couples who have gone on the other side of the fence, it always creates devastation. It always creates harm. I'm all for sin if it worked, but it doesn't work. I'm just, experientially, it doesn't work. So I have to begin by believing this is still true. This is still true. Regardless of what anybody else says, this is still true and authoritative for my life. Now, if you don't believe that, you're gonna be open to the, just the torrent of deception that's going on in the world today, especially about the area of sex. So this is the standard now that I'm gonna use to decide what's right or wrong. And by the way, all people have sexual issues, including me. All of us are imperfect. We all have sexual issues. That's not the issue. So when I'm sitting up here saying certain things are right or wrong, and someone would say, well, well, you're a hypocrite. Listen to me. We all make mistakes sexually. But the difference between a true Christian and a person who isn't is I accept this telling me what's right and wrong. 
And when I make a mistake, it's a mistake. It's wrong. It's against the standard. So I'm imperfect, but I receive this is telling me what the standard is. That's the difference in my opinion. Number two, the R. Reality is much different than secular TV, movies, magazines, and the internet tell me. That's not reality. When you're watching TV, when you're watching movies, and it's showing these glamorized views of sexual immorality. You know, one of my objections to movies and television is they they don't show the disease. They don't show the aftermath. They show the sexual immorality, but they don't show you the real life thing that's going on. Now, when you go to the grocery store, you know, one of the things about the grocery store is they have these magazines that always, they always, men's and women's magazines at the grocery store counter, they always have something about sex, always have something about sex. So these are actual uh, things that are on magazines. The first is Cosmopolitan Magazine. These are actual front cover lines on magazines from men's and women's magazines at the checkout counter now at the grocery store. This is Cosmopolitan. 50 ways to seduce a man in a minute or less. See, you know, you're at the checkout counter, you look over there, 50 ways to seduce a man in a minute or less. Okay. Kinky sex, 64% of you secretly want to try this. Okay, all right. Here, this is is one of my favorites here. 57 kinky sex moves to drive your man crazy. This is on the checkout counter there at the grocery store. 57 kinky sex moves. Do you really need that many? I, three or four is great. And let me tell you, I'm kind of the sex guy and I'm just telling you right now, there are not 57 kinky sex moves. I'm just telling they're not. There are 12 and they're in my new book. And I, so... So, okay, here, more, more titles now. More sex, less begging. <laughs> sex for a hundred days, health for life. For you, not necessarily her, but she'll, <laughs> so. And, and you see that stuff and it's not real. I'm just, it's not real. And, and so you watch movies or you see TV, it's, it's glamorized, it's, it's romanticized. Or on the internet, and there are men leaving their marriages for this internet sex, it's not real. That's not the way real people live their lives, it's just not, that's not real. But you get it in your head, uh, research has proven, I want you to listen to this one, that when men are exposed to three one-hour R-rated movies, it changes the way they view women. Three R-rated, not X-rated. Men begin to objectify women and remove their personalities from them. And so when you believe that, that nonsense that just says there's someone out there and they're having, you know, there's 57, kin- I'm, I am missing out on 57 kinky sex moves. <laughs> Basically, I'm being defrauded of a lot of, I could be a sex genius if it wasn't for that dud I'm married to right there. That's what, that's what it makes you feel like, okay? Well, it's just not real. So you, unmet needs open the door for the devil to attack our marriage. Unmet needs, this is true, okay? This is, this is actual. Listen to 1 Corinthians 7. This is the apostle Paul. Listen to what he's saying. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, here's what this is saying. When we get married, we give our, our body to our spouse. This isn't our body anymore. It's our spouse's body. And so you, you can't get married and then withhold your body from each other, but it's it's normal thing. People do it to punish each other. People do it for whatever reason. But Paul says here, you don't have authority over your body when you get married. Your spouse does for the right of them having sex and getting their needs met. Well, this goes both ways. So I was on a TV show and there were call, they were taking calls from around the country. I think this woman was from like New England. And she said, um, I was telling my husband, you know, that 
I want sex. And, you know, would you go to the doctor and, and get some help? And she said, my husband said, I'm fine. And she said, and I'm devastated. What he did was, is that he took his body, and he had a, a problem that was, that was treatable. He took his body and said to her, I'm removing this as a, as, as a formula in our marriage. And I'm fine with that. You're, but she wasn't. She was devastated. Then I had a man that I counseled. This was several years ago. And I'd known this man for a long time. His wife was a very attractive woman. I mean, he was a, he was a handsome guy. And he, maybe he was like late 30s, early 40s. And he came up to me and said, you know, Jimmy, he said, I'm a healthy male. And he said, I love my wife. I'm very attracted to her. He said, but she told me the other day, she said, your sex needs just stress me out. And I don't want to hear about them anymore. And she checked out. It was because of kids. You know, they had children. And he said, I help around the house. I'm more than happy to help her. But she just checked out. And there may be other issues. On both sides, there may be other issues. But here's what I'm saying. You meet each other's needs. Un the, the Apostle Paul says, if you're so spiritual that you're going to fast sex, and he's probably talking to women there, not men. But <laughs> she says, I'm going to go on a 40-day fast, if you don't mind. But he says, with consent. You can't do that without your spouse's consent. With consent, is what he said. Or the devil will come and tempt you. So we have to understand, some people are jealous. Some people are jealous and they're jealous about their spouse. Meet your spouse's needs, you won't have to be jealous. Honey, are you happy? This is your body, you know. It's not a license for abuse, it's a license for use. Okay, don't let, ever let anybody abuse you but it's a license for use. And it says, this is your body. I'll never hold it against you in a wrong way. I'll never keep it from you. I'll never punish you by, by taking it away from you. And I'll never give it to somebody. In other words, I'll never go serve the kids all day long and then not give it to you sexually. This is your body first. And I will give it to you. That's the way you make sure sexually that you close the door on the devil in your marriage. That's a, that's a core foundation of sexuality. And E, each of us has what the other needs. If we will serve the other, our marriage will flourish. We can't meet our own needs. If we could meet our own needs, we wouldn't get married. I have what Karen needs and she has what I need. And it's different. What I need from Karen is different than what she needs from me. And so I'm going to meet her needs. She's going to meet my needs. Now you may have heard me tell this story before, but let me tell you about the heaven marriage and the hell marriage. Because it's not biblically accurate, but it's a good story. Okay. Heaven and hell both have banquet tables, okay? And in heaven and hell, there's just this incredible banquet on the tables. And in heaven and hell, people have utensils on their hands that are strapped there, and they're too long to feed yourself. There's a banquet in front of you, and you can scoop food in front of you, which is just incredible, but you can't feed yourself. And so in heaven, everyone is in heaven at this incredible banquet, and they're scooping up the food and feeding each other across the table. The same exact picture is in hell, but in hell they're so selfish that they'll starve to death before they'll feed each other. I can't meet my own needs. If I could meet my own needs, I wouldn't have gotten married. I married, there are needs that only God can meet. I'm not talking about a dysfunctional relationship where you're asking something for your spouse that they can't get. But there are needs that Karen meets in me that I can't need in myself. In other words, I've got utensils that I can scoop what she needs and feed it to her, but I can't feed it to myself. I need her to feed me and she needs me to feed her. So a heaven marriage is two servants in love that are unselfish and said, baby, what do you need? You, you want some corn? You want some mashed taters? You want some okra? What do you want? Rather than saying, you want corn, open up. You know, like that. I don't want corn today. You know, let me tell you what I need because I'm different than you. But two servants in love just sit there and say, baby, what do you want? Babe, let me serve you. And you sit there and you feed each other. But in hell, they're so selfish that they'd rather starve to death than meet each other's needs. You have what each other needs. If you'll listen and have a servant heart, you'll, be, you'll flourish in marriage because you both have what the other person needs. Well, I hope you enjoyed that teaching and I hope that it really ministered to you. Th that comes from a series that I do called Lifelong Love Affair. And it's a series, it's also a book. And right now, for your gift of any amount, we want to get you the message from the series, The Secret of Lifelong Love. Now, you have to get this on the web. The address is there 
on the screen right now for your gift of any amount. Go online. We'll get you that CD single of The Secret of Lifelong Love. For your gift right now of $60, we want to get you the full four-part audio series, Lifelong Love Affair, plus the book, Lifelong Love Affair. Those will bless you, really minister to you, and maybe you can pass it along to someone that you care about to minister their marriage too. For your gift of $110 or more right now, we'll get you the full DVD series, four-part Lifelong Love Affair series, plus the book, plus our new Vision Retreat app. We teach every person, part of the Lifelong Love Affair is talking about being married on purpose and having a vision for your marriage. It will transform your marriage. And we will include, with your gift of $110 or more, the Vision Retreat app. It'll work on your phone, your tablet, your computer. It helps you to prepare to have a Vision Retreat, to go on your Vision Retreat, and to follow up afterwards, take your marriage to another level. It's all included. The information is there on your screen of how you can get these important resources. I really want you to get this. It will really help you and minister to your marriage. Here's how you can do it. Transform your marriage into a lifelong love affair. For your gift of any amount, we'll send you the CD single, The Secret of Lifelong Love. For your gift of $60 or more, we'll send you the Lifelong Love Affair CD series and book. In this inspiring series, Jimmy reveals how to stay in love for the rest of your life, how to have vision for your marriage, and how to have God's blessing on your relationship. For your gift of $110 or more, you'll receive the DVD series, book, and the Vision Retreat Journey app. This easy-to-follow online experience guides couples through establishing clear vision and setting goals for their marriage and family. And I'm saying you absolutely can have a marriage that gets better and better and better, and you can have a marriage that lasts for the rest of your life. No matter where your marriage is, you can have a lifelong love affair. Experience Jimmy series today. This program today, and we're you know we're talking about true passion and intimacy in marriage, sexual intimacy. This is a, a big area of marriage, and I was talking in the teaching, you know, just about some of the core values that we have to believe in. Uh, this is such an important area in our world today. People, when we meet, we naturally do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And then when we get married, we, we forget that. And I want to talk about just some of the issues. When we met and fell in love, I did everything right mm-hmm. because I was trying to, to gain your affection. Mm-hmm. And you were trying to gain my affection. We did everything right. But within several years after, really, after meeting each other, but especially after marriage, the wheels fell off. You know, and we were talking, the lifelong love affair, we talk about marriage as a marathon, not a sprint. Right. Okay. Many people get into the sprint mm-hmm. and even the sexual sprint. Mm-hmm. And it's fantastic and it's wonderful. And the next thing you know, it just, again, the passion wears off, but it goes back to the daily discipline. So mm-hmm. I want to talk about a few of those things, but the, the first one is, again, sexual passion and intimacy. The passion comes from the daily discipline, first of all, to pursue each other. Yes. Okay. Now, when we date each other, we work hard mm-hmm. at the relationship. Mm-hmm. But once we've been married for a while, sometimes we get lazy. And this is what happened to us now. I mean, I just got lazy. I stopped pursuing you. And then the, the passion was gone from our relationship. So talk about that from a woman's perspective. Well, I think that to keep passion going, you have to have your heart in it. You know, and if, you know, it's, it's if your heart's not in it, you, it doesn't matter how much you try to be passionate, it's going to show. That's right. You know, and so I think that it's so important, you know, to, you know, make sure that you're, you're, you're checking your heart. You know, do I have anything, um, that's in between us right now? You know, am I, am I upset with you about something? Are you, are you too busy with work where your heart's being divided? Right. You know, and it's no longer full of the, the things that were used to be so important, like you're saying dating. Right. You know, the reason, it was so passionate is because, you know, we hated school. So the best thing was having a date and seeing each other, <laughs> That's right. you know, or calling each other on the phone. And so, um, you know, it's, I think it's a lot about, you know, what, where is your heart? You know, is it to make yourself successful in business? Is it to be a great parent? Is it to, you know, I and mean, all those things are fine. Yeah, yeah. But if it's, if marriage is not first and if your, if your love for each other is not first and your passion mm-hmm. is going to follow that. And so, you know, I think it's a hard issue first. And then I think it is just, just the disciplines that you're talking about. I mean, 
it's like you've said before, having a date night is so important. It's one right. of the most key important things to do, especially in a busy society that we live in, right. is make that a priority. If nothing else, have a date night. And, um, and, you know, and then praying together. I think praying together is one of the deepest, most intimate things you can do in a marriage because it keeps you, it um, connected not only, um, spiritually, but it just brings God back into the picture where, you know, some of the stuff that you've been dealing with kind of has a way of just going away. Well, one of the number one problems that people have sexually is stress. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the issues that keep them from enjoying sex. But here's my point is whenever I'm giving the best to you, this is what happens when we date. I'm giving the best to you. I'm investing the best in you. And then what happens is I'm passionate mm -hmm. because you're you're my treasure. You're where I'm putting the best of my life. My passion nat naturally gravitates there. Then once we've been married for a while and it kind of gets old and mundane and we get lazy, I start giving the best to the kids mm -hmm. or the best at work or the best somewhere else. And the next thing you know, we don't have passion in our relationship and we're thinking, well, there must be something wrong. Well, we need to try something new to get the... No, actually, don't try something new. Just did what you did in the very beginning, and that is focus on each other mm -hmm. and make sure that the, that the relationship comes first. And when you're talking about praying, Karen, we're talking about making God first, mm -hmm. keeping God first in our relationship, making sure that we're first in each other's lives, and that that is just inviolable. Mm -hmm. That is the cornerstone of the relationship. And see, on that foundation then, you experience sexual intimacy. Every couple can experience intimacy and sexual intimacy for a lifetime, but it doesn't just happen because, you know, you, you get in bed and you're doing everything right in bed. It happens because you're doing everything right out of bed. And there are some things sexually that are in the teaching, in the fuller resource there, that I hope you'll get. But I hope that this is an encouragement to you because this is a big deal. And it's a big area of marriage that God wants us to succeed in. You know, we have, we're able to come to you because we have a special group of partners that stand with us financially every single month. We call them our rock solid partners. Really, they are the backbone of our ministry financially. And just every single month they give to support us to send us back to you every single day and every single week, but also across America and around the world to keep little children together with their parents to help couples avoid divorce and experience the marriage of their dreams but also to give people the skills and tools they need to succeed in marriage. Such an important thing. We're asking you if you would become a partner with us, and here's how you can do it. When you stand with Marriage Today, your individual effort multiplies with other like-minded partners, and together we can rebuild the dream of marriage for couples around the world. Being a rock-solid partner with Marriage Today grants you immediate access to an exclusive library of the ministry's resources and intimately connects you with our mission of helping couples succeed in marriage. That's really why we became Rock Solid Partners, just because there was so much available to help us to help other marriages heal the way that, the way that we have. That's why we're tied into the ministry. We want to be able to bless and give so they can keep doing what they're doing. You're guaranteed if you listen to any of the resources, you read the resources, you come to a conference, you will be changed. Everyone has something to give, and there are millions of unreached couples who desperately need the marriage-strengthening resources of Marriage Today. That's why we need you to join us. Become a rock-solid partner with the ministry and mission of Marriage Today. Welcome back. You know, marriage is a, a wonderful blessing for all of us. But one of the main reasons that people get married is sexual intimacy and, and also sexual exclusivity is in marriage, you know, sex is the only unique feature of marriage. And when we enjoy that with our spouse in marriage, and that is something that, you know, it, it's the only unique feature. And if, if it's something that we're enjoying and something that we're successful at, it is so wonderful, but so many people who get divorced get divorced because of sex. So this is a two-edged sword. It can be a tremendous blessing, but it can also bring some, be something that brings a lot of pain and division in our relationship. And Karen, we're talking about when the passion of a relationship and the sexual intimacy of a relationship suffer. It's always because we just stop being mannerly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people treat strangers better than they treat their spouse, mm -hmm. and they're more mannerly. Now, when we got married, <laughs> you know, I was I was Mister Wonderful. When we first got, well, first met, I'm talking about started dating. I was going to say. And yeah, I was, I, was, <laughs> I, I was not as good when we got married. But when we got married, I was a jerk. I mean, I was ill-mannered and I took you for granted. 
but I remember how well-mannered I was. And, and manners means respecting a person. That's mm-hmm. all manners mean. Mm-hmm. It means I respect you. The lack of manners means I don't respect well, I think you. a woman just appreciates a husband that, you know, communicates in clear words and not just, uh, 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 uh. Uh-huh. you know, it's like, thank you. And, uh, yep. can I help you? Or, you know, not just the grunts that, you know, that, cause I, I think that's, that, that's what you're saying about manners. But also on the same side of that is I think for a woman, we like to feel emotionally connected. You know, and I think it's just so important for a man to emotionally connect with her wife, you know, throughout the day. And that's one of the good things that you do for us is that, you know, you're so good about calling and checking on me and, and, um, always communicating. And, um, you know, and I think that, you know, for a husband to get the desires out of his wife that he really is looking for, if he'll, you know, do those simple things of emotionally connecting through communication, you know, phone calls, you know, how are you doing? That's the right. please and thank yous. Let me help you carry those groceries in. I'm Get the vacuum cleaner out. Okay, guys, point, let's go. Big points. <laughs> big points. Well, you know, honestly and truly, the, the misinformation that goes on sexually, and I, I was guilty of this, Karen. I mean, I, I had all these thoughts were in my mind. It's, it's kind of like it doesn't matter what happens outside the bedroom. It's what's in the bedroom that makes great sex. It's the opposite. Mm-hmm. What happens outside the bedroom yeah. creates the at the the excitement and the passion for what then can happen inside the bedroom and when you're when you're not respecting your spouse when when you're not mannerly of you fall in love because you say please mm-hmm. thank you you're mm-hmm. courteous you're helpful you're sensitive to the other person and you fall out of love because you become insensitive and ill-mannered well we hope that this program today has been a blessing to you we want you to know that God created sex God created sex in marriage to be something that is a pleasure for the rest of our lives. And we hope that this program helps you to achieve the sexual pleasure and intimacy that you desire. We'll see you next time right here on Marriage Today. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Subscribe to Marriage Today's YouTube channel for more marriage building videos and updates.